revolutionary concept of high-intensity training has been recognized as the ultimate method for increasing muscular size and strength. Due to extensive research, the mystery in finding your proper training program has been eliminated. A proper understanding of high-intensity training will provide you with the knowledge required to ensure optimal results from your efforts. There is nothing mysterious about the requirements of productive exercise. When formulating a high-intensity training program, the first thing to do is arrange the exercises in their proper sequence. It is a physiological fact that during exercise, the larger muscles of the body demand more energy than the smaller ones. It is advantageous, therefore, to work the largest muscles first, early in the workout, when more energy is readily available. From there, you can proceed to work the other major muscle groups of the body in descending order from the largest to the smallest. The leg muscles constitute the largest muscle masses of the body. The quadriceps and the hamstrings are predominant. Below the knee, we have the gastrocnemius muscle, better known as the calf. The next largest masses of the upper body are the various muscles of the back. This includes the trapezius muscles of the upper back and neck, and the latissimus dorsi, which is responsible for the popular V-shape appearance. Next in descending order of size are the pectoral muscles of the chest. There are actually two major muscle masses associated with this one muscle group, pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. The next muscle group down with respect to overall size are the shoulder muscles. The three major muscles, or deltoid heads, which allow freedom of movement in all directions, are the anterior deltoid, the lateral deltoid, and the posterior deltoid. This corresponds to the front, side, and rear portions of the shoulder area. The triceps and biceps are the predominant muscles of the upper arm. The triceps, comprised of three heads, make up two-thirds of the total mass. The biceps are comprised of only two heads, but draw more attention than other body parts despite their relatively small size. Pay close attention to the order of your workout. Abdominal muscles should be worked last in order to provide a winding down effect at the end of your workout. It is absolutely essential to warm up properly before engaging in any intense physical exercise. This acts as a safeguard against possible injury. Recommended are various stretching movements, including head rotation, toe touching, seated leg splits and squats. Spend no more than 10 minutes engaged in warm-up activities, then move immediately to the workout so as not to lose the benefits of the warm-up. Further specific warm-up action will occur within a particular muscle group during the first several reps of an exercise. When engaging in various stretching movements, you should not force yourself into the stretch position. Doing this will elicit a nerve impulse which will cause your muscles to contract. Instead, you should gently stretch into a comfortable position and hold it for several seconds until your muscles relax. Then gently stretch a little further until you feel sufficiently loose and prepared. Now let's get back to the workout itself. To ensure that the entire muscle is worked, it is important that you perform all of the exercises through a full range of motion. You must move from a fully extended position to a fully contracted position. Once the fully contracted position is reached, pause momentarily before lowering the weight slowly back to the starting position. If a momentary pause is impossible while the muscle is in the fully contracted position, the weight is too heavy. You should be able to hold the weight in a fully contracted position. As you continue to move the weight into the second half or negative phase of repetition, you must remember to slowly lower the weight to the point where the muscle is fully extended. Keep in mind, what you are after is the activation of as many muscle fibers as possible. The key is to obtain a full contraction, as well as a full extension of the muscle at work. There's nothing magical or mysterious about that. In order for resistance exercise to be productive, muscular involvement must be at a maximum. By performing a repetition too rapidly, the momentum will reduce muscular involvement. Try to execute all of the exercises in a controlled, deliberate manner. The positive phase of the repetition or raising of the weight where muscle contraction takes place should last two to three seconds. 
in the completely contracted position, hold the weight momentarily, and then lower the weight slowly. The negative phase, or lowering of the weight, should take close to four seconds to complete. Repetitions performed in this manner will apply resistance through a full range of motion, thus ensuring balanced development along the entire length of the muscle. You should avoid fast, jerky repetitions. Aggressive overload is the cornerstone of an effective weight training program. Add more weight, do more repetitions. This is how you continue to improve. If you persist in handling the same amount of weight for the same number of repetitions, you'll never progress. Your muscles will have no reason to grow bigger and stronger. Recommended is the following method of progressively overloading the muscles. First, choose a weight for each exercise which barely allows the performance of eight repetitions in perfectly strict form. As you continue to train to failure, your strength and size will undoubtedly increase. When you have progressed to the point of being able to perform 12 repetitions, add about 10% more weight to the bar or stack. Your goal again being a progressive increase of intensity and workload placed on the muscles. Intermediate and advanced trainees with at least one to two years of regular intense training will benefit greatly from the correct application of various other techniques. This includes such things as force reps and pre-exhaustion. For forced repetitions, immediately after your own maximal rep, have a partner assist in the completion of two more repetitions, which would have otherwise been impossible. This will raise the intensity level an additional increment. After exhausting your capacity to control negative resistance movement, you attain a state of total muscular failure. For the additional performance of negative repetitions, have a partner assist in raising the weight. With any remaining available strength, lower the weight slowly back to the starting position. The single most important factor influencing increased muscle size and strength is your capacity to utilize 100% of your momentary ability. Training to failure should be followed by everyone wishing to induce maximum muscle growth. By performing an exercise to a point where you can no longer raise the weight in perfectly strict form from complete extension to full contraction, you ensure that the breakover point is reached the level of effort in a set at which growth stimulation commences. Theoretically, there is no problem. On a more practical level, however, this becomes impossible when an exercise involves two or more muscles where one is a weak link. Many conventional weight exercises involve the use of several muscle groups. These compound movements, as they are so called, are seen to involve stronger primary muscles and weaker secondary muscles. In a bench press, for example, it isn't the pectorals that prevent you from lifting more weight or doing more repetitions, it's the smaller, weaker tricep muscles. Situations like this consistently prevent the primary muscles from being worked to a maximum and receiving full growth stimulation. As in the case of the flies bench press combination, the remedy consists in first isolating and tiring the primary muscle, then using secondary muscles in a compound movement for assistance. Practiced in this manner, primary isolation exercises carried to failure will allow smaller, weaker muscles a temporary strength advantage over the fatigued primary muscles in the succeeding compound phase. As Ray demonstrates, proceed immediately with zero rest time from an isolation exercise to a compound exercise. Taking more time than this will seriously compromise the effectiveness of this method. A delay of only 3 to 5 seconds will allow the fatigued muscle to regain up to 50% of its initial strength. Keep the following tips in mind. The number of repetitions should not be very high. More than 10 repetitions in each of the two consecutive sets could conceivably lead to a premature cardiorespiratory failure instead of a muscular failure. Never perform more than two consecutive pre-exhausting superset cycles. Beginners will usually not require pre-exhausting techniques. Intermediates and advanced bodybuilders can add forced and negative repetitions to either one or both of the exercises in the pre-exhaustion cycle. Don't get stuck on using pre-exhaustion or any other method exclusively. 
using pre-exhaustion once a week for each body part is sufficient. As your body adapts to increasing levels of training intensity and stress, higher levels of intensity will be required to further stimulate muscular growth. The tendency will be a desire to do more. This, however, is neither desirable nor possible. You can train hard or you can train long. You just can't do both. Sustained attempts at high-intensity training does little in the way of stimulating further growth. Instead, what results is a reduction of the body's recuperative abilities. All work performed past the point of maximum stimulation will be counterproductive. A routine that is intense enough to stimulate growth must also be short enough to allow growth to take place. If workouts and exercises continue to be added over and above the recommended schedule, your intensity will diminish, and so will your results. It is the intensity of your workout, rather than its duration, that determines your rate of muscular growth. So your immediate goal should be to reduce the time spent in training and to maximize your effort utilized in training. Direct application of these high-intensity training principles will guarantee optimal progress. While it is true that each of us are unique as personalities, it is also true that we are physiologically alike, making our training requirements practically identical. Yes, there are those who will gain faster than others, owing to differences in existing levels of fitness and development, age, and in innate adaptability to exercise. The important point to remember here is that you will grow progressively larger and stronger muscles only when you train with increasing levels of intensity. This is universal and applies to all human beings. Intense training is purposeful behavior aimed at the goal of increasing muscular size and strength. In order to train as hard as possible, you must retain a clear image of your purpose. Once your goal is sharply but realistically defined, all that remains is carrying out your plan. Don't, however, worry about your individual potential. Potential is only the expression of a possibility, something that can be assessed accurately only in retrospect. In other words, you'll never know how good you might have become unless you try. So let's get with it. Here now is a basic three-day routine meant to be performed every other day with a two-day rest on weekends. It is a full body workout that can be used by athletes, bodybuilders, and anyone interested in increasing overall strength and fitness. As a basic routine designed to work all the major muscle groups, it can be used by even advanced trainees with positive results.
And here now is a four-day split routine that can be used by bodybuilders who have grown accustomed to the stresses of regular training. The scheme is to work half the body on Mondays and Thursdays and the other half on Tuesdays and Fridays, with Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays off for rest. We'll begin by looking at Mondays and Thursdays and then continue by looking at Tuesdays and Fridays. The leg extension is the only exercise that effectively isolates the frontal thighs. After this, immediately move on to perform squats. These should be performed in superset fashion immediately after reaching positive failure on the preceding leg extensions. Only perform two cycles. Since squats involve the use of much heavier weights, proper caution should be exercised. Choose a weight which allows about 10 repetitions and stop at the point of positive failure. To round off your leg work, you should not forget to work the antagonistic muscles at the rear of your thighs. They are usually referred to as the hamstring muscles. Perform these leg curls for only one set to positive failure. To ensure balanced development over the entire leg, perform two to three sets of toe raises. This is an exercise where full extension and complete contraction is absolutely essential in order to adequately work the calves. The next muscle group worked in the progression of your routine will be the pectoral muscles of the chest. Dumbbell flies serve as a tool to pre-exhaust the muscles. Take this exercise to positive failure and immediately perform incline presses with either a barbell or dumbbell. Do two cycles of this and no more. The pre-exhaust phase has now allowed the pectoral muscles to continue to contract closer to 100% of their momentary ability. Do not allow more than three seconds between exercises. The last muscle to be worked on the Monday-Thursday schedule will be the triceps. Triceps extensions, when performed strictly, serve as an excellent isolation exercise. Care should be taken to ensure that the elbows point straight up. Follow this immediately with a compound movement. Dips will serve to complete this phase. Two cycles are all that's required. This was the first half of our split routine. Now let's move on to the second half, which is to be performed on Tuesdays and Fridays. Lat machine pull-downs are a very good exercise for isolating the lats. Perform all movements in deliberate style and make sure the bar touches the chest. Upon reaching positive failure, proceed immediately and perform bent over barbell rows. The rows will serve as our compound movement. All motion should be strict and deliberate, again taking care that the bar touches the chest. Perform the rows to total failure and attempt to complete two full cycles. The next group to be exercised are the trapezius of the upper back. Do a set of shrugs to positive failure and immediately proceed to the upright barbell rows for the compound phase. The traps will receive a thorough workout by pre-exhaustion techniques. Complete two cycles and do no more. Next we'll move on to work the deltoid muscles. Lateral raises effectively serve as an isolation movement. From here again, we'll immediately proceed to the press behind the neck. Perform two cycles, high intensity style. In order to finish the deltoid group, suggested is the performance of two sets of bent over laterals. Go to positive failure. The only muscle group that remains to be worked is the biceps. As with previous muscles, we will first pre-exhaust them by performing a set of barbell curls. Go to positive failure and immediately perform a set of palms up chins. Due to the additional muscles involved, a few extra repetitions can be carried out. 
do this to total failure and complete two cycles. These routines are meant to serve as guidelines. They are not intended to restrict your training. Certain exercises can easily be substituted, so feel free to be creative. The important thing to remember is to adhere to the basic underlying tenets of high intensity training. Kathy Ray and I have demonstrated various exercises with many pieces of equipment. This is not to suggest, however, that various other types of equipment could not be used just as effectively. You may even find that certain types of equipment suit your individual temperament. Various combinations of equipment can be used with varying degrees of success depending upon your goal and effect desired. Whatever you choose, free weights or machines, no one piece of equipment is capable of working magic. For optimal results, the single most important factor is intensity of effort. The results you realize will be totally dependent on the energy you put forth. So give it your all and realize your ambitions. This is your host, Mike Menser, wishing you much success with high intensity training.